Welcome back. Um, I know we uh, were planning to do some more casting this episode, but with a little bit of bad weather, we're going to switch gears and we're going to do some actual cleanup on the one part we were able to make. Uh, as you remember from last time, we had this gigantic whatever from our mold but actually what happened i don't know if i explain uh i don't think i explained this last time uh we were using new sand and this was the first time we attempted something this large so we bought all new stuff turns out the sand we bought was sealed in bags perfectly fine we had no thoughts of any issues turns out those bags were wet that sand was wet on the inside and it wasn't like dripping sopping wet but it was wet enough to where you could grab a clump and then let loose and it would hold shape and i kind of knew better than to try to cast in that but we really wanted we were all set up aluminum's already smelting we really wanted to try to get something accomplished and went ahead and decided to pour uh, i knew it wasn't uh, so wet that it was going to be dangerous causing aluminum to splatter out of the sand it wasn't that wet but what it did do is we believe it re-wet the slurry coat that was on the part and that as soon as it got hot that caused that to build steam and then open up pathways for the aluminum to flow out of the form uh, and then once it got into the moist sand more sand more steam was able to accumulate nothing like boiler steam pressure explosion but it's enough to separate the sand and allow the material to push its way through if, it, if you've ever experimented or played with this type of stuff pouring aluminum into dry sand it really doesn't go anywhere if you have if you if you pour aluminum right on the surface of wet sand it's just going to ride on top of the sand it doesn't it's like there's a surface tension like water beating on a tabletop or on a piece of glass it's very similar to that that's that's why when you could cast with not having a coating on your foam and still have a piece but you will end up with a textured sand texture on the exterior piece and the slurry coat creates a barrier between your uh your pattern and the sand so you don't get that sand finish and you have a cleaner finish that's easier to clean up as long as something like this doesn't happen <laughs> so anyway so since it, uh, our weather wasn't a preventing to go out and do some more casting uh we decided to start cleaning up the part and here's the cleaned up part uh first i just started with very simple getting it on the chop saw and chopping off the bigger chunks and knowing with this and a few other things i needed a good f well i needed better more tooling for my uh equipment so i purchased a two inch face mill which works wonderful uh it's got a morse taper two uh tool holder uh they originally sent an r8 tool holder which i can't use but anyway um so i first tried to after doing the chop saw i tried to um grind this thing and grinding it was going to take forever i was going through bits it was slow and it wasn't going to work out it just was it, it would be it could be done eventually but it was very obvious this needed to go on the mill and be and have it milled into shape so that's when i decided to purchase this and basically uh i found the better of the two sides and ground the high spots got down to the actual because one side actually was almost exactly as it should have been it had a bunch of this like uh crusting around the sides but all it needed was some minor grinding and i set it up on the deck on the milling deck with uh spacers and faced it and once i had i had a half inch or no i'm sorry a quarter inch of extra material uh due to the thickness of the foam this was a uh three quarter inch wood 
our original patterns were three quarter inch, well, the original parts were three quarter inch, and the um, foam was one inch foam. So it worked out perfect. We knew we had a lot of material that we could remove and get a good part. So I faced one side, made it true, flipped it over, and added blocks all the way around, clamped it down, faced one side, faced this side, remove the clamps, move clamps to there, and then face those sides. And then I had this uh, mounted on the rotary table. I was able to use a half inch end mill and just walk around and around and around until I was able to uh, turn this into, uh, turn it down to a round shape and then uh, move the clamps from the inside to the outside and machine the interior. Then I attempted to turn these pieces but it didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped so uh, some parts are still actually it's really close to being done. I might actually call it done because <laughs> it actually looks the way it, it looks the part it does what it needs to do it doesn't have to be precise and perfect even though this is pretty much consistent uh, consistent one inch thick right all the way around that was the original measurement was a one inch right around so i'm happy with the way it turned out um i just wasn't uh anticipating having to do this much work to clean up a part but doing it i learned a lot i learned uh what the limitations on my my milling machine are and what improvements i need to do to my milling machine for future projects which is always good also it's kind of it's always good to stress test all your equipment <laughs> from from time to time i hope you enjoyed all that um i know i had a lot of fun doing it i also kind of pulled some of my hair out also doing it uh like i said pushing the machine to its limits and then beyond that was kind of difficult uh, I did learn I got to take lots of small bites this machine likes to take small bites I learned it's not as rigid as it need as it should be I believe um, upgrades in the future are going to be done I learned what really needs to be addressed on my machine which is good and like I said it's always good to stress test all of your equipment push it to the end and see what fails and doesn't work uh, that allows you to go in and fix it and make it better so anyway uh, next week we will be back to casting um, I'm super excited about it uh, I really want to get it uh, I really want to make some good parts that need very little cleanup and we're kind of moving in that direction attempt number one yay <laughs> um, but uh, We've got some new sand. We're not even gonna mess with the old sand. We found new dry sand and uh, purchased a couple hundred pounds. Um, also, a new pattern. We're gonna be making a new pattern next week. I'm not sure if we'll get this cast next week, uh, but we are making a pattern and I'm gonna be t turning this on the wood lathe to create the dart. Uh, and this piece, uh, I'm also going to have to build a rig or build a setup to slice very thin pieces of foam to create these fins. So join us next week for that and hopefully a lot more. See you next week.